I, I'll tell you, I said it 20 years ago when we started the Young Turks, no joke. Ben and I were on the air and I said, look, dude, you know, at this point, the left is 100% defeated. If we ever get to a point where we're considered moderates, uh, that, that means you'll know that we're close to winning. And so here we are. And our positions haven't changed at all. My positions haven't changed. And uh, and we went from considered <laughs> radical left to kind of mainstream now. Was it proud, Han? Wait, hold on. I want to I get it correct. Is Oh, it is? Uh, it was Pierre Joseph Proudhon. I dream of a society where I be guillotined as a conservative. Well, almost there for me. <laughs> so, but the problem is, okay, yeah, online, uh, I'm considered mainstream or moderate or whatever I'm considered. But in, it wasn't. in Washington, no, they still think I'm radical. I'm American. Everybody shut the fuck up. Okay. Mm. Shut up. I'm going to read. I'm going to read names incorrectly. Okay. It's my God given right. Fuck you. Okay. Fucking nerds, dude. Freaking, uh, I like to read books, and uh, all the books have gay stuff in it. Uh, that's what you sound like, Chad. Shut the fuck up. Not around, right? No, they're not. Okay, I good. I like how my dad wandered in the background the other day. Yeah. A little earlier. Yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, speaking of your conservatism, I mean, we we agree on the, on, you know, the, the psychotic uh, idiocy that is running rampant in the Republican Party. I... I mean, it seems like the, there were, for the first time ever, electoral consequences for that in this uh, past midterm election. Which is awesome. Um, which was interesting. I mean, it feels good a little bit, even though I do know that the Democratic Party is, you know, incompetent and will not learn anything uh, from, will not learn the appropriate lessons from this um, and will not use this uh, as an opportunity to get anything done regardless. But, and now that they lost the House, I mean, good luck uh, ever getting anything uh, done. And uh, the Senate is not looking too great. If you look at like uh, the the uh, if you look at the Senate map next election cycle and the next election cycle after that, it is looking increasingly worse for the Democratic Party. So, uh, yeah. good luck to the Dems. Not that they would ever do anything with all the power that they have. They had a you know majority in the Senate and also in the House, and yet got nothing done or not a lot done. Uh, a lot more than they should have gotten done. Look, the election was a win for three different sets of people. One is Democrats because they're thrilled. They're like, "This is perfect. We lost the House, so we don't have to do anything. Yeah, we just sit around and do nothing." Which is the ex like Democratic leadership loves that strategy. So they're in hog heaven, right? Um, and you and I uh, agree on that 100%. Yeah. Controlled opposition party, 100% interested in like fundraising, but never really doing anything. Because if they did something, they would hurt the bottom line of their corporate benefactors. Exactly. So the second uh, people that uh, love what happened in the election is the corporate world. CNBC had an article uh, the day before saying the markets are rooting for split uh, chambers or for the Republicans to gain uh, both houses, at least since Biden's president, because the markets want gridlock. And whatever the markets want, the markets get. And, of course, they got gridlock. But they had gridlock even when the Democrats at all had the House, the Senate, and the White House, right? So they always get what they want. Because they get gridlock on their own party. They get internal gridlock. And uh, this is a concept, this is a fundamental concept that people need to understand, which I talk about all the time, called the rotating villain. Uh, if it wasn't going to be Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin, it was going to be Maggie Hassan, it was going to be numerous other senators, uh, a bunch of them that voted uh, down the uh, $15 minimum wage when they had the opportunity, when they knew that it wasn't going to even get passed, like they symbolically said no to increasing the federal minimum wage uh, to $15. And those guys are always going to be uh, a, a part of the... Uh, there's always going to be enough Democrats that will say no to progressive legislation. Yeah, if they needed, they could have pulled the Maggie, Maggie Hassanabi card, and uh, she would have done exactly what cinema yeah. mentioned. So, uh, and then the last set of people who liked how the election went is sane people like us, because we're like, oh, okay, good. At least the lunatics lost, right? It was and a that's like a big deal that the lunatics lost, because I wasn't sure. Were you sure that they were going to no. lose? No, I wasn't. Actually, as a matter of fact, I'm still. I, I'm, you know, I'm excited about what this means for the uh, broader electorate, okay? But also at the same time, I'm still very fearful because I personally think that the number of freaks within the Republican base can grow. There's still a capacity to fucking grow. And if it does grow, then we're fucked. Then it's just full tilt fascism in America. Yeah. Well, look, and we're not out of the woods. The, the a little time, couple, it's fine. Uh, go on. So, number one, uh, I don't think DeSantis and the other guys are actual fascists. 
I think the only two actual fascists are mm-hmm. Trump and Tucker Carlson. No, I don't think I think Tucker Carlson more than Trump. I think Trump is just like I think Trump is just Trump. He's unique. No, I know, but Trump would end democracy in one second flat. And so if he got back into office, he's not leaving. So that's a mortal threat. Um, so I think Trump and Tucker Carlson are are deeply problematic and would end democracy. Other than those two, I, I, dis- so I think the Republicans win in, uh, in 2024. I know people like flip out over that. That's not true. I, I disagree with you on two different ways, two different uh, avenues. One, I... I don't agree when you say the Republican Party across the board is like interested in preserving democracy or any meaningful capacity when like everything that they've done thus far is literally undermining the Democratic vote. And it's not exclusive to Trump. It is the Republican Party strategy across the board. They want to justify voter suppression tactics. And in order to do that, they have to lie about voter fraud, which they've been doing, including even like the most moderate, you know, smart intellectual Republicans like Paul Ryan have even questioned results in California back in the day. So that's a that's a fundamental Republican thing. That's like a that's a way for them to win elections. But not only that, but you have the Supreme Court. And you have uh, state legislatures gaining power. And the Republican Party, I think, has shifted a strategy from winning elections, which they personally recognize is becoming more and more, uh, which is they personally recognize is becoming harder and harder. So I think they're just bypassing the legislature completely, the legislative body uh, completely, because you can always undermine it. The Democrats are going to cuck themselves there. And also you always have the filibuster weapon that you can use to just stop any sort of legislation dead in its tracks, even if you have a minority. And they're utilizing the court system and the state legislatures to uh, to to now uh, rule the country uh, with minoritarian rule, uh, even if they don't win, even if they literally like in this uh, case with Kentucky, Attorney General Daniel Cameron, that's Mitch McConnell's own personal hand selected attorney general uh, a day after the Kentucky election ended. We're on that very same ballot. Uh, people in Kentucky democratically voted by majority vote to preserve abortion protections in the state of Kentucky. Daniel Cameron turned around and said, doesn't matter. We're still fucking, uh, we're still taking your right away. Yeah. So I think that's that what they're going to the keep time. doing. So first, let me just agree with you 100% uh, across the bo- uh, board. So when I say... Uh, that I, I don't think DeSantis is a fascist. I mean that he's on the regular path to fascism, slow path to fascism that the Republican Party is on. Yeah. So they're, but, and they've been on that path since at least 1980 when Paul Weyrich said, our power goes up with Google people. government syndrome. Yeah. Um, when, when people vote less. So they've been trying to suppress the vote for 40, over 40 years now. So that's clear. They're the fascist party. They always have been. They don't want democracy. They want minority rule. There's no question about any of that. Right. But it's a slower path than Trump where or, or Tucker, where they would just go in and be like, that's it. We're done with it. Right. Yeah. I mean, Trump already tried it. He literally, yeah. literally tried. And, and Tucker right. and Trump have like a level of charisma that could also get that done. I don't think DeSantis has that level of charisma. I think he's just like a wannabe Trump. He's yeah, only 100%. second best Trump. 100%. This is how, look, I'm still very much worried that Trump's going to win. That he's going to win the Republican primary and they're going to run Biden against him, yeah. et cetera. So I, I'm very, very worried about that because mainstream media they always does the same stupid things. They project their ideas onto the rest of the country, right? They're like, oh, uh, no one I know at the cocktail party likes Donald Trump. He has no chance against DeSantis. And by the way, part of that is everyone at the cocktail party loves DeSantis. Yeah. They're not no, like no, no. us. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. hate DeSantis, but we hate Trump a little bit more. They are like... They hate Trump. They love DeSantis. Which is Basically. weird because Ron DeSantis is only prominent within the National Republican Party for doing the most Trumpian shit, but only doing it in the safe haven of fucking Florida, where the Democratic Party has basically given up on all ground game and is always running to the right and getting their shit pushed in. Yeah. Another place where they ran to the right is New York, and we saw what happened in places where they did run right, uh, get wrecked uh, Democratic Party. Uh, but Ron DeSantis is not a moderate by any means, even no. though the Republicans are presenting him as such. He literally did the fucking Martha's Vineyard immigrant trafficking scheme. He did the election uh, police force thing, like right before the election, where he arrested a bunch of uh, he arrested a bunch of felons who thought that they had their uh, you know voting rights restored. He has uh, done this sort of shit time and time again. He did the "Don't Say Gay" bill, like. He is he is very much like Trump. The only difference is he's Trump in Florida, okay? That's it. And Florida does not uh, represent the interests of the white suburban moms who are like, yeah, I still think this like, uh, you know, I still think that like constantly talking about uh, penis inspection day at school is is kind of gross. I don't want to think about it that much.
So, look, I don't know if DeSantis or Trump is going to win. Uh, it's it's too early to tell because it's not DeSantis. It's the entirety of the Republican establishment and mainstream media against Donald Trump, right? And that's about a 50-50 contest in a Republican primary. So, uh, but I do know that DeSantis is a bit of a bitch, right? So, he is. And, and, I'm, He's and that's, that's why I'm worried he's going to lose to Trump. Little Ronda. Yeah, uh, Ronda. That's, yeah. that's good. Does, does Trump say that? No, I'm saying that. I, okay. Trump, please hire me. I'm literally, I will work for you, dog. Don't, what the don't, fuck? Don't give him any ideas, man. Yeah. That's what Little Ronda. Ronda stinky. He's got tiny hands. <laughs> don't give him any ideas. That's a good one. Yeah, I'm okay. telling you. No, I, I, dude, I think what? about this all the time. I'm like, I haven't. It hasn't sat right with me that he said Ronda Sanctimonious. That's a fucking, that's a, that's a $2. That is literally a SAT word, bro. You yeah. can't do that. No. And he doesn't even know what it means. I guarantee you that if you ask Donald Trump, okay, what does Sanctimonious mean? No, just call him a girl. He should, yeah, he should hit the fucking classics. Call him a girl and call him gay. What are you doing? Be like, oh, Ronda, he likes Florida a little too much. Maybe just like Andrew Gillum. Were you at the party, Ronda, with Andrew? <laughs> Your impression is definitely better than mine. I do Alec Baldwin doing Donald Trump. Uh, but uh, Yeah, because you're a lib. So, what's that? Because you're a lib. Uh, sure. And, uh, and I'm a boomer and I'm all those things. But you can tell that DeSantis is a bitch because he's copying Bush, uh, Trump's hand motions. So when you yeah. study tape of Trump and then you do this and you do this to try to appeal to Republican voters by being a carbon copy of Trump... That means you ain't Trump. That means you're a bitch. Yeah, no, you're always going to be the second best Trump. When the original is there, you know, everyone's going to go for that. Okay, but speaking of uh, you being a liberal and conservative, first and foremost, at the top of the hour, there's a six-second outbreak. I'm not even going to do a segue here because I'm going to ask him about, uh, you know, the reason why Jake's been trending for a while beyond uh, the the last iteration of like right wingers yelling at him, a lot of extremely online uh, leftists, understandably, and this time I think correctly, were very critical of your takes. Mm -hmm. We are going to talk about that. Um, if you no longer want to see those ads, though, all you need to do is subscribe. Which you can do for five dollars or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. You get one free Prime subscription a month. Notorious Rob, thank you for the five gifted subs, allowing five people to no longer see the ads. Here's the one minute ad break now. Okay. <sighs> Okay, you guys are rating me so low in front of Jank. That's embarrassing, dude. That's really fucked up. Okay, that's... Anyway, they're giving my ad break segues a, a rating. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't even know what that means. That I just gave a segue. Usually, I just like cut it into something like without them expecting it. So then they rate it if it's a good debate. If it's good, if it's a good misdirection, I get a high rating. If it's bad, they give me a low one. And I didn't even try, so they gave me like a is really this, low one. Now is this the rating? No, no, this is a hype that's train. That's just a hype train. That's a hype train uh, because people are subscribing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, as well, they should. I don't know where the ad rate, and I have a bot in the chat that tracks all the ratings, and um, I don't know where I don't know where the bot is though. Tamana, thank you for the ten gifted subs. Okay, um, you are Rick Caruso's most loyal soldier. Many people are saying you are the Fedayeen for Rick Caruso. <laughs> Okay, so uh, is this true? I literally don't know. I only have heard you talk about crime a while ago, like when you and I talked about it. You know what my takes were back then. Yeah. Um, since then, it seems to have evolved into uh, unimaginable places. Yeah. So first of all, uh, people, as always, have a simplistic way of looking at politics. Uh, so by the way, yeah, does that include leftists? Yes, definitely. Okay. They're like, me no like Caruso. Me saying Caruso is the same exact thing as Trump. No, wait a minute. Hold on. Now we're, you're saying absurd things. Okay. No one's the same exact thing as Donald Trump. So, uh, and you saying that you're a billionaire real estate developer. Yeah. Yeah. But one that isn't a total moron. The one that didn't try to end democracy, but more, most he's, importantly, he's, wor he's on, more dangerous. On. Most importantly is they say, if you vote for someone, that means you love them. Okay. No, it doesn't mean that when you vote for someone, it means you endorse them. That doesn't mean that at all either. Okay. At no point did I go and say, oh, you have to vote for Rick Caruso. I endorse Rick Caruso. I think Rick Caruso is great. I, didn't say, I never said any of that. But you say you were voting I'm, I'm for voting Rick Caruso. I'm voting for him, and guess what? I did vote for him, okay? So why did I vote for Rick Caruso? Because I think Rick Caruso is amazing Hell. and he's a savior? No, of course not. I voted for him because he's the, the better of the two options. Why is he the better of the two options? Mainly because of Karen Bass. If you think Karen Bass is going to do I mean, I'd be shocked if you think this, but if you think Karen Bass is going to do I love anything, Karen Bass. Anything 
She's going to do nothing. No, I, I think nothing. I think okay. she's going to be the exact same kind of Democratic mayor that Garcetti was, exactly. which is I'm just out. holding. But that's every mayor, dude. That's like literally. No, no that, that is literally every mayor. Los Angeles is not going to get a good fucking uh, solidly leftist mayor. Neither is New York. Uh, it's always going to be, uh, you know, well, people that are trying to juggle between the real estate developers interests and the police unions. Uh, and, and maybe a little bit more special interest sprinkled on top of it, but that's pretty much it. That's like always going to be, um, that's always going to be the mayor's position. That's the unfortunate reality. Okay. Now, so now having said that, um, as always, as is the case with every fucking election, uh, we had, uh, a, a moment where we were either going to vote for a dog shit candidate like Karen Bass, who didn't even make an effort. Like didn't 100%. even, yeah. didn't even make a fucking marginal effort in like, uh, like going after some progressive voting blocks or saying that she was going to do anything progressive remotely uh, and just basically was like, I'm blue, I'm a real Democrat, vote for me. Um, versus an infinitely verse, uh, infinitely worse candidate in the form of Rick Caruso, who is quite literally a... a uh, all of the issues that create homelessness personified. It's like yeah. wrapped into a, a like you know an Italian human skin. Yeah. Which, by the way, I didn't vote for him because I'm you know anti POC, anti Italian. That's why I didn't vote for him. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a person of yeah. color. Yeah. Okay. So look. Uh, so good. We agree. Karen Bass would have done nothing. So then that leaves two things, right? So and he's going to do nothing. Um, so and by the way, as always, I'll just say I hope I'm wrong. I hope she's great. I hope she actually does something. And by the way, I don't want her going for their left uh doing something would be actually doing something about crime and and uh and uh just the anarchy absolute anarchy in la okay so <laughs> we'll talk about it we'll talk about it okay but do i think caruso uh, was going to be a savior and was gonna say no i i know that the mayor of la is a weak position uh i know that he's uh, was gonna look out for his own interests of course right but was there a 10 percent chance that he might do something yes and why why is there a 10 percent chance because number one what are you spending 80 million dollars for if you're not going to try to do something like so what does something mean it could mean no, he was going to try to skim more off the top, build more, you know, uh, developments, et cetera. But he can do that just by bribing Democrats like he's been doing his whole career. So he doesn't really need that. No, if he wanted to run for higher office or he wanted to brag about being a great mayor, he would actually have to try. So I voted for someone who's going to try instead of someone who you can guarantee is not going to try. I mean, okay? he just wanted to, I think he just wanted to cut out the middleman. <laughs> yeah. Like that's not, that's so. the way I see it because all, because you okay, don't need it, Haas. But why, but the reason, he's got a gravy train. But the reason why uh, people like Karen Bass are shitty is be, literally because Rick Caruso owns them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So he's just trying to cut and out the middleman and be more fucking, uh, uh, be more aggressive and and worse overall uh, than than Karen Bass because like they're not going hard enough. I mean, the difference between Karen Bass and Rick Caruso on homelessness is marginal, but Rick Caruso is uh, in the worst direction where he just wanted to. Both of them are advocating for sweeps, just like Eric Garcetti. By the way, I don't give a fuck what Eric Garcetti ran on or what he said he was going to do, but they all do sweeps. Sweeps have not stopped in Los Angeles at all. I, you and I probably have a disagreement on what sweeps are, uh, 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 why sweeps are bad. I don't even think you think sweeps are bad. I assume you think they're, they're not bad at all. Given what you just said about well, it's, it depends anarchy. On what you mean. It depends on what you mean. But sweeps are when but by police way, come Garcetti? in. I've never heard of him. Like that, that guy's been on vacation for how many years? Yeah, of course. He, he's non existent. Council district uh, uh, positions are probably way more prominent and way more influential in Los Angeles than, uh, than, than the mayor is. Regardless, though, regardless, though, and you are correct on the Garcetti thing, the reason why homelessness has continued growing in Los Angeles and in California in general, despite Garcetti's, uh, uh, you know, approach to it, or despite everyone else's approach to it in the city councils, uh, is because sweeps, taking homeless people from like one fucking corner of the street to the next one, like as though all of a sudden it's just, the, you know, they're gone or whatever, um, is a demonstrable failure. And the only difference between Rick Caruso and Karen Bass's was going to be that Rick Caruso was interested in putting them in fucking concentration camps. No. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. He didn't use the term concentration camp. He said he wanted to concentrate homeless people out in a, in a tent city built outside of like city limits. 
No, he said many different things. Uh, he 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 wanted to set up different centers and in, in different uh, like lots that the city owns in different parts of the city, etc. Look, the sweeps are generally useless, but Garcetti wasn't even doing sweeps. Garcetti yes, he just was. stopped. You know, no, he but, just but, stopped. but we he still have doing everything. So why are you don't think sweeps are happening in Los Angeles? I mean, maybe they're happening, but they're happening a lot less frequently. But it doesn't matter. That's not going to solve the problem in, in the long run. Look, there's two. There's a couple of things here. So first of all, we're going to have a giant disagreement on whether how bad crime is right so well uh, yeah i'm just gonna look at numbers and no i have numbers too first of all and second of all you guys are 100 percent wrong on one critical issue right which is that there's a massive amount of crime that's just not being reported okay and how do i know that because literally everyone i know in la says oh i there was a crime i didn't bother reporting it because cops never show up okay so you're going to say it's anecdotal but let me give you one sense of it no okay. i wasn't going to say that i mean it is quite literally an anecdote however you are right it's the blue flu literally all across the fucking country but the but we are held hostage by a police uh, uh, by a police force that just simply refuses to do their jobs uh, at all and have never really been good at doing their jobs regardless. And that is that much is true, but the but the answer to that is a strong mayor that is actually going... No, 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 no. Murat, kapi kapat, hemen. Hemen kapi kapat. Sorry. It's just... Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sorry, uh, where were we? Strong mayor of LA and stuff. So look, that's exactly my point though, Haas. You know Karen Bass is not going to be strong at all. The cops are going to say, yeah, we're not going to do our job. What are you going to do about it? And she's going to say, I'm so sorry, right? Yeah, but Rick So Caruso here's what Caruso could have done. Again, it's like a 10% chance. We're like gambling here on like zero versus 10%. So one number one, uh, the cops want to blow Caruso. So they might actually work, right? So, and that's not fair and that's not right. But it's true, right? So that's point one. Second is Caruso is at least strong. So if uh, if let's say the cops, if I was mayor of LA, let's put it this way, and the cops are like, "Oh, blue flu, we're not working," I'd be like, "Okay," I'd instantly start firing droves of them, right? And then they would say, "Oh, you can't do that. We're going to sue you." I'm like, "I know, I know. Sue us. Go sue us." But if you're not going to do your job, you're fired. You're beyond fired. And I'll make a public spectacle out of it. And if I can catch you committing a crime, I'll put cops in handcuffs and walk them out. Okay? So I'm not going to tolerate anybody not doing their goddamn job if they're a cop. Now, would Caruso have been that strong? Of course not. He loves cops. But could he? Would he have been potentially stronger than Karen Bass? Anything. A light breeze is stronger than Karen Bass. I understand that. Okay. Except Except, except cops are also not the solution to crime, just like cops They're even the before. Of a solution. Well, here's the issue, okay? Here's the problem. You and I have a fundamental... Um, he, you and I have a fundamental disagreement on the reason for why crime is happening. I think you say I'm like too theoretical and too like pie in the sky because of my attitude to it, which is that there are demonstrable ways to cut crime and all of those roads lead to... Uh, material benefits for uh, working class people specifically by you know eliminating certain problems that they have you also have a different we also have a difference in agreement between you and i where i think you much like many people in your demographic see disorder and lawlessness in the form of like homeless people existing in society around no, all of us that's and not what we're saying well a lot of people that are in los angeles if not you that voted for rick caruso in in you know uh, with with similar like I'm actually a very you know nice liberal person kind of attitude voted for Crusoe because they assume when they see a homeless person they think crime now for, first and foremost let me just let me be clear do homeless people commit crimes yeah, of course of course they do I mean there's a dude that like jacks off outside my house all the fucking time literally all the yeah. time yeah. and and the reality is like the way to deal with that and the way to ensure that more people don't become what I call tier three homeless, uh, the the type of homeless people that you see that are very clearly suffering from mental health complications as a consequence of being homeless for an extended period of time, okay? Um, the way to ensure that that doesn't happen anymore and the way to uh, stop that from being out in public is by creating more housing, affordable housing, and also uh, having a housing first approach 
to uh, to to uh, dealing with homeless people. You disagree with me, but this is something that has worked literally around the globe. There are That's examples of this. At all. It's been tried all across the country and it hasn't worked at all. It's Wait, never worked. Okay, we, so you cannot say that we've had a housing first homeless policy anywhere in the United States of America. Okay, are you kidding me? LA's been trying to do housing first this whole time. It's nothing. There's no houses. There's never going to be any houses. Exactly. Do you want to know why? And we're going to wait around we, and have we got raw out we got of 150 control million dollars. Wait, we got 100 with, with, while we're all waiting for okay. 12 houses to be built. Los Angeles got 150 million dollars from the federal government to deal with the homelessness crisis on top of the 80 billion dollar budget surplus we had. Why do you think uh, the the uh, the what was the the hotel conversion, the motel conversion policy, nor uh, any of the other homelessness initiatives? Oh my God. Did, why did none of those initiatives actually have money spent? As a matter of fact, they sent the $150 million back to the federal government uh, after not using it. Do you want to know why? Because Democrats are losers. No, who never well, do that that's true. Okay, but the real reason is because real estate developers were like, "Fucking build houses, absolutely not." Real estate right, developers right, because, like Rick Caruso yeah. are always. No, you guys don't get it. It's man. not even. It's not even funding. Like you they. Don't have, you don't uh, have Caruso, like you know Caruso. No, well, no, no. You guys don't. These don't, don't. guys, unironically, these guys unironically are like they're even when there's money, they're like. Do not fucking build another house. Do not build any affordable of housing. Of course, of course. Like, you guys don't understand markets. So, look, there's so many things to address here. But is Rick Caruso and all the developers going to voluntarily build affordable housing? Of course not. You're asking okay. them to take a loss on something when they can make a giant amount of money. Of course, they're not going to do that voluntarily. Waiting for them to do it is moronic. So you have I'm to, not. No, I know. So what, I, what I'm saying is blaming Caruso or anyone else, you can do it. I don't mind. I, Caruso's not my uncle. I don't give a shit, right? You're like, oh, I can't believe how greedy he is. But that's not going to solve anything, right? You have to force them to do affordable housing. I agree. Force them, right? And the I Democrat agree. would never do that. Would never do that. Because there's, like, the minute they run into a donor, they they wet themselves. So like, oh, it's a donor. I, I bet you Karen Bass turns around and kisses Caruso's ass. Uh, okay. for, I, I don't disagree with anything you just said. I've never been like a vote for the Democrat and we'll solve all the problems type of person anyway. Okay, I, as so, a matter of fact, I care very little about that. That's why I always no, talk about even, organizing power. And that's why I always talk about making sure that there are organizations that are out there that are creating the mechanism of pushback so that we can bully the fucking Democratic Party to then finally uh, yeah, you know, that's get shit done. what I've been trying to build for so the that, last, So that's what I, years. yeah, I, I agree. So that's so, what I do. That's what I, I yeah. advocate for, tenants, unions, and the like. you guys like criticize the developers, it's wasting your breath. They're always going to maximize profit. Move on. Get to the government. I know, but I'm not, but I'm not, talk, but I'm not talking in fucking policy yeah. wonks. I'm talking in normies who don't understand it. So, of course, I'm going to fucking shit on landlords and, and real estate developers. And it depends because on the they landlord, don't even understand. The but they don't even, but they personally, most people don't even understand. They're like, what? Like, I kind of don't like my landlord. Uh, you know, he's an asshole. Painted fucking white over everything and didn't really fix anything. That's like your only experience. You yeah. don't understand, like, the also, the policy implications on top of that, uh, that, that, uh, level of capital uh that level of capital accumulation in the hands of a uh, few people and what kind of policy implications that has they are able to get their desires across to democrats and, and republicans and by the way you have to have a distinction there between small business owners and large business owners small landlords and large landlords large landlords are going to steamroll you they only care about maximizing profit and if they don't if they're an executive they'll be fired and they'll be replaced by someone else small landlords oftentimes are good people who are small business owners trying to do the best they can and all the times by the way they're pricks i don't but care about i don't care yeah. about a grand grandma or grandpa who has like a fucking nest egg and that's like their yeah you know that's their that's their pension uh that's their retirement fund that's not what i'm talking about that's not what I'm, but i want to be clear because people but, don't but it doesn't they, matter okay, it doesn't now matter let's go to homelessness you say look ultimately we're so, talking about homelessness okay yeah. so and if you, you think that if you think that a housing first policy has not been achieved or like uh, some level of market control has not been successfully done. I'm sure you've heard this, like you know the existence of places like Red Vienna, as a matter of fact, right? Where 65% of the fucking housing in Vienna, in Austria, uh, is is publicly owned. It's like literally government housing that they created. It's beautiful, it's mixed income, and it fucking works. Places, it, places with higher social safety nets, with better social safety nets, with better programs for reintegration, with uh, less of a, a aggressive carceral state, 
unironically have demonstrably more positive results with uh, combating recidivism, with dealing with homelessness. Like these are these are places that exist okay. on the planet. So first of all, there's two different things that we have to talk about: short term and long term. In the long term, doing what Vienna did, what Utah did, what Houston is doing is correct. Okay, so in the long term, of course, you have to build affordable housing. Of course, you have to get folks into houses. Okay, so but the problem is in the short term when L.A. and and other places go, oh, we're theoretically going to build houses 48 years from now. So in the short term, we're not going to do anything. Okay, and we're going to call that hashtag freedom. That doesn't make any sense. So what that leads to is what we have here in L.A., which is so I go to Supercuts a couple of weeks ago. The uh, the windows busted in. I asked the hairdresser what what happened. The whole place, the entire strip mall is a disaster zone. Okay, the the windows also broken at the ice cream shop right next to it. She said, well, people started coming in and just taking whatever they wanted. We would call the cops and then nobody ever came. So we stopped calling the cops. Now they started throwing bricks through our window, right? And so the ice cream place stopped fixing it. We keep fixing it every time they throw a brick. So this is a working class person that's pretty scared every time she comes into work because anyone can come in and take whatever they want because there's goddamn anarchy in LA, like literally lawlessness, okay? You smile, but it's literally, go ahead. You call the cops on the guy jerking off in front of the house, they won't come, right? Well, I mean, so, I wouldn't, I wouldn't so you don't want to call. Yeah, you don't want to call the cops. But how about a family that's got kids? I mean, my mom stays with me here. It's not like it's a it's a comfortable situation. Yeah, and, how and about I don't if think she if he attacks your mom. Okay. Okay. No, I understand. goddamn right. I'm going to call the cops on that guy. So there's okay. a guy who went and jerked off in front of a, hair, a different haircut place in L.A. for 40 minutes, and the cops are like, "Whatever, who cares?" The women inside are terrified. So if you say don't arrest that guy, I 100% disagree. No, I'm not. Definitely in, arrest that guy. No, I don't. First of all, that dude is committing a crime. Exactly. So yes, um, I do agree with uh, arresting someone who has their dick out and are jerking out in public. That would be insane. No, but a lot no of leftists don't. They're like, oh, hashtag no, freedom. You're, no, you're, you're like straw manning leftists, okay? I don't care about I've what- I've seen them do it. I yell at fucking leftists for a living, okay? As a professional career, uh, that's what I do. It doesn't matter what people fucking think. You're talking to me right now. And uh, stop like uh, having this like broader uh, argument with like the overarching left. Who gives a shit what people on Twitter think, okay? No, if you're jerking off in public, yes, you should be for a brief moment, at least taken away from that circumstance do i think that that person needs to go to jail permanently no i think that person needs no, mental health That's treatment like that person no I'm, I'm i didn't say you said that okay okay i'm giving you what my position is like we need to stop that guy from jerking off in the streets throwing him in jail for the night and then and then releasing him later is not going to stop him from jerking off that's his passion okay he loves jerking off in the street no. He's never going to stop. That's the only true. way, the only way to stop that guy from jerking off on the fucking street is by one, well, he wouldn't be jerking off the street if he had a fucking roof over his head, but also by getting him no, the adequate, would. the adequate, the adequate treatment that is an absolute necessity for him. Okay. That's it. That's what you need to so, do. So, and there's that, varying that degrees the, of offenses too, which right. we're talking about. So that gets into the midterm. So in the, in the long term, we agree. Build affordable housing, get folks in their affordable housing. In the short term, good, we agree. Arrest the guy, okay? You throw a brick through somebody's uh, uh, you know, window, you get arrested. You go in and take uh, people's shit, you get arrested. You jerk off in the street, you get arrested, okay? So uh, so these are obvious things, but not obvious to some, okay? So then, number, uh, but then when you talk about the midterm, so what do you do with that guy? So do I want to put that guy in prison for a long time? No, I don't, right? But do I want to make sure that there are consequences? Yes. Okay. So why? Well, three years ago, nobody was jerking off in the streets in LA. Then we stopped enforcing the law completely. And now everybody's doing it, right? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Literally driving my kid to school on Friday. Guy at, uh, in front of the 7-Eleven, like a couple of blocks from my house. Bro, that, that he's doing it. Guy, I, I know. a couple of weeks ago, How dropping did, my parents It's off. not, dude. There's a guy there, doing it right no, in front of their the house. the reason why there's more homeless people jerking off in the fucking streets. Is because is, we're letting them. No, dude. 100%. What, no, so you tell me. Come what? on. It's because there's more homeless people. People, and the more homeless people there are, the more the longer their homelessness continues, the more fucking mentally ill they become. And that's only happening as a consequence of the housing market. Is a direct, it's not even fucking correlation, it's a causal factor. They Don't only evangelize them. They know exactly, like, it, there's a range. There's a what, spectrum. Like homeless people know exactly what they're doing. Okay. They're like, no, 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 there's a range. There's a range. <laughs> okay. So, for example, uh, different anecdote. A neighbor uh, that 
that's three houses down from me, my street, okay? A uh, homeless guy comes and starts making lewd comments to women inside his house, inside her house. She's scared to death, okay? She says, I'm going to call the cops. He says, go ahead. They're not going to come, okay? Now, I've heard, go ahead, they're not going to come half a dozen times, okay, in New York and L.A. Like, so homeless people and and there's and not all homeless people are criminals, obviously, right? Not all criminals are homeless, obviously. But there is an intersection, right? And so those folks have gotten the memo. There are no laws. You can do anything you want. So she calls the cops. The cops don't come. What does the guy do? He goes and sits in her backyard. Bro, motherfuckers are literally jerking off in public. You think they're watching television to be like, oh, wow. You the, think they don't the Eric know? Garcetti? Why do you think they're going and grabbing all the stuff? You think the word's not out on the street no, that you could steal under reason, $1,000 and there are the no consequences? Yes, the reason why people do that is also... Again, are, when's the last time you fucking brick the window and like stole shit? Because I'm not a criminal. And exactly. I'm not desperate and I'm not all exactly. These That's and I'm the not point. Unbalanced and I'm not. Yeah. No shit. That's what. I, wait. 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 Hold up. That's the point. The only reason why motherfuckers are doing that is because they have nothing to lose. They're in a dire economic situation. No, but situation. they weren't doing it three years ago, Haas. Yes, They're they doing were. it now because there are no consequences. Yes, they 100%. were. They were not, Haas. They're absolutely not. There was. Okay. I never went to a now that we've cuts. It, I never went and talked to neighbors where they were like, oh, the cops never come. Oh, like criminals are now literally the can do whatever okay. the hell they the want. The cops never come is, is, a, is a common thread, Okay. Cops definitely do not do their fucking jobs. But the idea that like there is rampant crime all around the country that is happening everywhere and that the cities are like, uh, you know, Gotham City and we need fucking Batman to come pummel their skulls in is not a correct narrative. It's 100% there is, correct except for the Batman part. No. We don't need to pummel their skulls in. But Haas, also, why do you think they're locking up toothpaste at CVS? Because people aren't coming in and taking whatever the fuck they want? No, they're, they're no people are stealing shit 100%. With and, no consequences. But yeah, the so reason why they're stealing shit, the reason why they're stealing shit is because the cost of living is unimaginably high, which no! literally. That's, that's patronizing. That's you insane. That's that, crazy. No, you and I are never going to be in agreement on this. This is a fundamental disagreement that you and I have. I do not believe people, two things. I do not believe that there are more homeless people in front of, uh, you know, people's houses and shit because they just know cops are not going to come and beat their asses and like, I guess, push them somewhere else. It's both. It's because it's because the housing market is unimaginably broken, fundamentally broken. Americans think houses are not a form of shelter, but instead a way to accumulate capital. And it's a, it's an investment vehicle for many people. Uh, so you got to di look. So that's one. You have to differentiate between homeless people. So affordable housing is a massive problem. Of course, you're right about that. And so and we're not doing anything to fix it. But so I had a uh, when I ran, I had a somebody who was volunteering on my campaign who was a perfectly bright guy, got a great education in psychology, and he's a social worker. So he should be making a, like a livable wage, right here in LA. No, he was homeless. He had to live out of his car and he would go shower at the YMCA, okay? So that guy is an affordable housing problem, but that guy's not going to throw a brick through your wall and he, or your window. He's not going to so, jerk off Jake. in front of your house. He's not going to stab anyone. The guys who are doing that either are, have mental illness issues or... Uh, or are just flat out criminals, but mainly why do you drugs, think, fentanyl, why? et cetera. And they, okay, no one, yet, first of all, no one on Fent is stealing shit, bro. Have you, have you, no, but you they are what? throwing uh, <laughs> bricks through windows. I mean, why? What's the, like, bro, fentanyl knocks you out. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's like, we're talking about medical grade heroin. No shot. They're not doing any of that. It's meth, probably. Meth, uh, fentanyl, whatever okay. it is. Pee -pee. That's ridiculous that you're looping that in. But uh, listen, it's not ridiculous. You think that it's not drugs? Drugs no, are I think, a giant I think, problem in LA. I, I think that are, I think that they're definitely if we're a lot of these people meth or fentanyl, fine. Okay, right? here here is why they're doing that though. I, I I think I've talked about this a lot. That's why I said like the tier system. Okay, there's three tiers of homelessness. Okay, the first tier of homelessness is what I call invisible homelessness. A lot of people who are homeless, but they're couch surfing. A lot of people who are homeless, but like they at least you know have some temporary shelter over their heads right yeah. they're trying to make ends meet that yes, degree of homelessness is super common and most people don't even recognize it they wouldn't even consider them to be homeless right that's right that's and right. then um and and in that situation you're in a volatile situation shelter is the most important need for survival fucking animals have caves you know what i mean you need yeah. to yeah. you you don't you can't brave the elements right that leads to oftentimes unfortunately 
especially if the temporary situation is is you know extended and you lose your temporary situation that leads to tier three uh tier two homelessness which is the in between having like the tent in the city or a tent in the fucking streets versus uh, having permanent shelter over your head tier two homelessness is when you start living in your house or living in your car and that makes it so that all of a sudden you can't actually shower, uh, you can't hold a job, you can't even really hold a job in tier one homelessness as well, but it becomes even harder to hold a job. So now all of a sudden your recovery from that circumstance becomes even harder. Yep. When then, that's usually when you start self-medicating. That's usually when you start trying to make money by selling drugs uh, or or uh, engaging some in Some do, shit. some don't. Like engaging, ben and I were engaging on the air and in like I said, some look, kind dude, of, and it's know, a means of survival. Is engaging in defeated. something, uh, some actions that will help you survive, help you see the next day, help you maintain the roof over your head, even if it's fucking temporary, even if it's a fucking car. And most people in that circumstance then fall into the third pit, which is tier three homelessness. And usually... And at this point, it is deeply traumatic. The, the volatility and the instability and insecurity of not having permanent shelter is so fucking traumatic that it starts breaking your brain. That's why you see the motherfuckers that are walking around the streets with like, you know, with their dicks out and, and taking shits on the sidewalk and like throwing it at people, uh, sometimes engaging in like violent behavior. Those are people, unfortunately, that are that don't even have a fucking tent. They're just like literally sleeping on a sleeping bag if they can find one. Those dudes have had their brains completely wiped out. It doesn't happen because those people are evil. It doesn't happen because those people are lazy. It doesn't happen because those people are immoral. That action comes. No, they're not immoral. You can't say no, that they are. No, you're nuts. No, half and half. Look, we agree on tier one homelessness. We can't largely agree on tier two. On tier three, uh, so there are guys whose brain is fried, 100%. On those guys, I would fund mental health treatment, which we don't do. And then I would force them to get mental health treatment. So there is no, oh, like, I think maybe yes, he'll recover yes. on his own in, in the, on the streets. Yes, involuntary holds are an unfortunate necessity for some people, yes. Especially yes. ones that do not have, uh, especially people that uh, unfortunately do not have, like, a, a, a way to even give consent in, in uh, exactly. medical decisions. When you go in but that's But that should be handled, again, by social workers and not police. police yeah, can, okay, no problem. Okay. But the police need to be there to protect the social workers. But but yes, mental health treatment delivered by social workers, we hope, but with safety, okay? Uh, but when you say that it's not immorality, no, within the range of those folks who are in tier three, there's different ranges of your brain being zapped, right? Because of drugs, mental health issues, et cetera. And then there's different ranges of people who choose to do it because they want to and people who are desperate, et cetera, et cetera. You think some people don't get off on it? I think that there is absolutely maybe like a maximum of 10 trust fund uh, kids that want to LARP like an anarchist lifestyle for the summer or whatever. And beyond that, no, the, these people are not in. So a guy who goes and sexually assaults uh, a, a woman in the streets, he's not immoral? No, that dude is fucking gone. Like that dude is. is sometimes they're they gone, need but sometimes they're like, hey, you know what? And by the way, yes, I do think. Yes, I do think that rapists and murderers as well deserve rehabilitation, no matter what happens, because you but and I have a fundamentally. Yeah, of course, dude, that's insane. No, rapists should go free. Is not something I believe in, Jake. Okay. Come on, I know, but some do. So I just no, want to no, that's not true. No one believes that. that to the prison yeah, well, okay, well, say, so hey, let them have a fucking picnic in the street. That's not true. First of all, like I, I dunk on abolitionists regularly but at least i have done some level of reading on you oh, know bullshit yeah, don't that's give me this. True. oh i read this book and in in the book it explains why we're no. gonna have a utopia if we let that, everybody in the, all um, the criminals go and i can't believe i'm de you're making me defend reading which is and also defend anarchists which i fundamentally no, disagree no, 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 no. with my point this is very reading. frustrating I read for a living Haas. i hate my this point is that abolitionists always who have never read any of those books by the way they're 200 yeah, percent full of they're shit. anarchities they will be like oh read a book it's like there's such a bullshit so they're thing. insane and brother ins why do you give a shit who gives a fuck about what some anarch kitty from idaho is saying on fucking twitter who cares avoid it it's fucking white noise in the background it doesn't right, matter good we agree I it doesn't so matter bullshit. but like okay. you're but you're almost doing the same thing that conservatives do which is like hyper focus on a straw man that is it's like not a straw man but it's irrelevant in the grand okay. scheme of things right, it is irrelevant. completely irrelevant Okay, people also believe in like psychic pedophile vampires. You don't see me fucking obsessing over it unless 
one of those people is like going out and shooting a fucking nightclub. Okay. okay so we're done with them since you and I are not in that. Yes. Club. Okay. But good. as far as so, abolition goes, even the, even the concept behind abolition, even the understanding behind abolition or a rehabilitation first approach. Uh, and, and even when you talk about like abolishing the police force, there's still some form of like democratically organized uh, institution that is going to resemble what the police force is. So it doesn't absolutely. even fucking matter. It doesn't matter so we're right. not having that conversation because even most of these people uh, personally, when you when you arrive at the truth, recognize that there needs to be a presence of a fucking uh, organization that is democratically associate, uh, democratically organized, that is still going to maintain the presence of law and order. Okay, like that's just how societies have to function, and there's always still going to be fucking rapists and pedophiles and people like that, and you do have to it, at the very least. Uh, uh, even if, uh, you know, medical technology is advanced to a degree where you can like literally uh, medically fix pedophilia or whatever, even if that is the case, you still have to remove them from society for that brief moment, yeah. okay? So, so we so, are in but, agreement in all that. So you don't think, like, I, I, help me understand your point then about like, okay, there it's not a matter of morality. When it clear, in my opinion, clearly there's a range, right? For some people, hey, it's not a moral issue. It's a mental health issue or a drugs issue, et cetera. And for some people, they see opportunity and they're a little bit more on the uh, uh, you know, selfish end of the <laughs> no, spectrum and they, they jump on it no, and they I, take advantage I think, of other people. And they I, think, other people. I think the people who are infinitely worse uh, at, at like taking advantage of opportunities, and I'm not saying this to be like a fucking, uh, you know, uh, uh, red-blooded uh, commie here. I'm not pinko posting. I'll, I'll use terminology from your generation. But like, no, the, the criminals are literally those who are at the tippy top and not some fucking random brain-broken no, psycho. Both. It's both, Haas. It's both. Those dudes are not making decisions that because they're like, ooh, Anarchy is happening in the streets. Let me go jerk off outside this fucking house. That is such a marginal approach that like hyper focusing on that person, which I'm not even sure exists, but let's say, you know, of course there's like different kinds of fucking demons out there. I'm sure there's a guy who is literally like that. Okay. But like that person, okay, is not the overarching majority in, and if you, I can't believe I'm saying this, but like community organizers and people who specifically work on, on you know, with homeless people will tell you that that is not the majority. These are people who are in fucking dire conditions because of, uh, be, because of luck. It, there's no moral nah, factor no, in play. It's some percentage, some percentage. When I say no, I don't want people to misinterpret that it's none of those folks. Of course, some are in that situation. But okay, a but lot of folks, no, a lot of folks, look, first of all, there's sexual assault going on all the time. Okay. Yes, so in, especially easy. in homeless encampments yeah. and, and more importantly, homeless shelters. Homeless people have an infinitely higher likelihood of getting sexual Actually assaulted. I know. We have to fix the shelters, 100%. We agree on that. That's easy for us to say. Unfortunately, no Democrat can ever fix anything, and the Republicans don't want to fix anything. So that's the situation we're in. But, but Huss, are there people who do sexual assault in the streets of women? And by the way, you and I are both big guys. Generally, we don't experience it. We don't even recognize it, right? But are women scared to go in the streets because guys think, well, the cops aren't coming, so I'm going to sexually assault them? And is that because they're immoral? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, it happens. Fuck yeah, it's because they're immoral. And and they should definitely, and fuck yeah, there should be consequences. I, I'm, I'm afraid I'm not going to, what? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I haven't heard back from anybody else. So I think we're going to be here. Okay, we'll, we'll end it. We'll end it in uh, 10 minutes. Okay. Okay. As far as like, as far as this conversation goes, like sexual assault and all that, if you think that police have been historically the best force at dealing with sexual assault and sexual criminals, I don't, I don't know what the best, but I think they're a start. They what else but, have, but they've demonstrably not been good but what across the board. Do? What The only impact here is that people now assume cops are purposely not even uh, uh, dealing with any of this at all, even though they were never really I dealing with it from the, way, the beginning. By the way, we never even got to why the cops are doing that. There's two different reasons well, why. Well, the, the, the thing that has changed now is the the uh propaganda behind it cops have always been fucking shitty at this their their clearance rates are awful they're never actually solving fucking crime they have historically never been able to and now they have a fucking scapegoat that's the difference that's the only difference between cops now and cops fucking 10 years ago is that they have a scapegoat they can say it's because you're being offensive to us, because you're hurting our feelings, because you're defunding the fucking police, because you're not giving us enough money, when it's the 
demonstrably false. They are getting more money. You at least admit that, right? Like, yeah, yeah. So look, have cops always been lazy? Have they never solved crime? Yes. Okay. They don't even, most of the time throughout my life, they've never even tried to solve crime. Like we can get into But the, you can't say they're, they're solving sexual assaults when there's a national backlog of rape kits that exactly. have I was gone just untested. Say rape so I know that. So you're not going to get me to say wonderful, rosy things about cops. So, uh, but at the same time, is it different now? Absolutely. So if somebody was breaking into a house, somebody's throwing a brick through the window, they would have come. And they are not coming now, okay? So there is a giant difference. So why are they not coming? I'm going to do so what? There's, nothing usually. But. No, there's several different reasons. Number one, okay, uh, yeah, their feelings got hurt over defund the police. Well, how I would deal with that is the minute I got a sense that you could prove that against one cop, 10 cops, 100 cops, I would fire them all. I don't care about your goddamn feelings. You do your goddamn job. I'm okay? in favor of firing cops. Okay, so that's... <laughs> That's point you, one, you, okay? We agree there. there. But, there's, but there's more reasons. There's a second reason. Second reason is, yeah, they might have gotten more funding. They did, Haas, but they're 800 cops short in L.A. So there's actually literally less cops. And them being super lazy to begin with, my God, trying to get them to actually do their jobs when they're undermanned, that's a whole other thing. The, but the big one, potentially the biggest reason, unfortunately, is, is that we passed laws where we lowered sentences. Those laws made sense on their, uh, uh, on their own, and I was in favor of those. Lists, I, I don't okay? know. I, I don't know the 800 cops number that you just dropped, but it does. I don't know enough. I, I will have to do my investigation on that part of the conversation, but I'm going to go ahead and just say it. That sounds like fucking straight up police benevolence association uh, propaganda right there. Okay. They always say that shit, dude. I, look, does it look like I'm doing propaganda? A little I'm bit. telling you how shitty the cops are over and over and over again? A little bit, yeah. Well, which part is like telling you the cops oh, they are doing have a, they have a the three point. Terrible. They have a three point two billion dollar budget. These fat fucks need to do their fucking jobs or fire them. That's it. But we, look, largely, but we, agree we will with never that. change that. But we will never change that. Let's get to the most important part. Okay. Unfortunately, the most important part is we lowered sentences to a place where they made sense. That's great. I was in favor of it. But there was one giant thing. It appears that we did not take into account, which is plea deals. Okay. And I was worried about it. Uh, but as it, but like now that we've seen it happen, uh, it's much worse than I was worried about. Okay. Plea so, deals. What so, do you mean by that? So what happens is you take a crime that used to be a felony and you bring it down to a misdemeanor where it should be, right? Mm -hmm. They go into a trial and the prosecutor goes, well, I'm going to have to plea because I plea on 98% of the cases, right? Well, when I plead it down. Uh, they always, but that has always happened. That always, right? Yes. So, but it's not when new. You, when it was a felony, they would plea it down to a misdemeanor and that, and you would get an appropriate level of, of punishment, justice, whatever you want to call it, right? Now, when it's a misdemeanor, they're pleading it down to nothing. Probation, you walk, right? Then you add in a cash bail. Again, cash bail, no You want to know bail, why they're sense. doing that, right? You, but, you do know why they're doing that. That's not because they're fucking woke, Jank. That's because our no, prisons because are over pop. No, it's be that wasn't done because like, oh man, people are so progressive. That was literally done because our prisons are overpopulated. So I, what's the solution? You want to make new prisons in California? Yeah. It has the highest density of prisoner per capita. It's like literally higher so than guys, fucking entire countries. About, you know, when we talk about prisoners and prisons, so there's two giant different things that go into prison. One is a whole heap of people that smoke pot and like not and not anymore no, in California. I'm not even about but that. low level yeah. offenses that are bullshit, and we stuff the prisons full of those people so people uh, that prison industrial complex can make money, etc. So we all agree we have to stop stuffing the prisons with people who do not belong in prison. Okay, okay? but we're talking about but, California, so why are you bringing but, that up? But for the people who actually did committed crimes, the people that are they're releasing now, I would not release. If I have to build more prisons, then I have to build more prisons. But I'm not going to let people who committed felonies, people who did domestic violence, people who uh, did uh, grand larceny, people who were steal, stealing cars, raping people, murdering. And so I'm not going to let them go. I'm not going to okay. let them go. Okay? You're, you're tossing, you're tossing so multiple to offenses. Prisons, you're tossing multiple prisons. offenses in the one. Um, so I'm saying people that actually did serious crimes need to go to prison. But when we lowered it to miss, for some of them, it seemed like, hey, look, a nonviolent offense should be a misdemeanor. Okay, it makes sense. Except then you look at LA and New York law, and as California and New York law, and as it turns out, there's tons of violent offenses that are mis considered misdemeanors. Like the woman, in the, the, the I can keep doing examples. Don't get over-focused on the examples, but I'm just giving it to you. Bro, you so just you said Grant. Like you, there's you, a guy you, who okay. went and shoved shit in a woman's face in New York, and they're like, oh, it's a misdemeanor. He walks. Bro, you're literally, okay. When it comes down to crime, 
You know this better than anybody else. The reason why this conversation gets off the fucking rails is because when you focus on hyper-specific instances of crime, all crime is bad. Everyone's conditioned into saying that. Everyone understands that. When you fucking start talking about rapists and, like, violent criminals while simultaneously adding, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, instances of, like, grand larceny or people that are fucking, like, uh, breaking into places and, like, stealing Cro toothpaste yeah, or whatever. I, I don't consider those to be in the same category whatsoever. But the solution to almost all of that, especially in a case like California, because how do you describe California then? How do you, how do you describe our prison population being so fucking massive here in California? Is it because people are too woke? Is that, but somehow we have simultaneously arrived at this inherent contradiction where California is so woke that we're letting prisoners go, but we also have some of the highest prisoner per capita, uh, po uh, one of the highest fucking prisoner uh, uh, numbers on the fucking planet, but more than others. So others. general number. Okay, I would like the prison population to be smaller. Now, okay. having said that, okay, if it means yeah, letting question. criminals go to make no. that happen, I'm not going to do that's it. That's not. And I, by the way, Haas, it's easy for you to say, hey, stealing somebody's car is no big deal. But like somebody at TYT just had their car, so not a host, okay? So somebody that works on the crew. I'm not and saying that. you know that. what? That fucking hurts, man. Yeah, it Grand hurts. Theft, Grand Theft Auto so or Grand who, Larson or different The guy things. who stole that car should go to goddamn prison. I'm not interested in like, oh, it wasn't not a moral issue. I'm not talking about that. You, I'm talking, bro, you keep doing this. There's a, why are there different degrees of criminality? Why is there even a criminal code? If you're going to consider fucking Grand Theft Auto, which is an entirely different fucking charge with someone breaking into a fucking CVS. You have to, you can't use both of those at the okay, same time. All right. You can't say that the fucking guy who's breaking into a CVS needs to go to fucking prison immediately while also simultaneously talking about rapists and drug dealers. This is what fucking Donald Trump does. This is what no, reactionaries no, but Haas, do. I clarified right in the beginning the difference between petty crimes and not. But by the way, on the CVS thing, now we get to an interesting issue because on that one, would I have them go to prison? Yeah, of course I would, right? Like, otherwise, everybody's going to go to CVS, take whatever the fuck they want. And in fact, that's exactly what's happening now. That's exactly what's happening now. Yeah, I think, uh, I, I think that that is not going to change. And the unfortunate reality of why that's not going to change is because even the liberal side is just basically thinking that we need more hammers and we need more uh, enforcement of laws when enforcement of laws already exist. And it's still happening. And it had happened in the past and people were still breaking into no, fucking CVSs no, and weren't. stealing shit. They weren't. No, All dude. of this changed it about three years ago. Okay. There was CVS was not it's, locking up all the toothpaste. Three years ago, and you know what everybody it's watching a, it, knows. It, it is quite literally just a. It is just what you are seeing, what is visible to you. The reason That's the we're only all difference. seeing it is because everybody's yes. walking into every CVS no. and taking whatever the it's fuck because, they want. It's because the media is telling you non fucking stop no, Haas. that this I is what is a gigantic. A this is what the gigantic problem is. This is what's going on in the world. That is the Haas, main we're reason. All seeing it with our own eyes. Talk, go talk to anyone that works at a CBS. Talk to working class people. Bro, I, fuck the media. Fuck rich people. Talk I haven't even talked about this. People. I haven't even talked about this, but someone broke into my car like uh, literally two weeks ago. I haven't talked about this on stream. I, I, I get it. I understand. Crime is a crime is a major component of living in an urban environment, living in a big fucking city, and it is definitely something that impacts every single person. I understand that. Okay, I at the very least am seeing that as a reality, and not saying we just have to live with it. I guess. Oh, lol. Take the L. That's not what I'm saying. I mean, I can take it, but others can't, obviously, yes. understandably. My frustration is that there are demonstrable, successful methods of dealing with the issue because I don't think this issue is starting or stemming from a point of a lack of enforcement, but instead because people are literally suffering. They're not, they're not rich. <clears throat> they're not middle class. They're not having a good fucking time. Nobody steals toothpaste from CVS while they're fucking rich. As a matter of fact, when rich people do it, they're just like, oh, that's just a kleptomaniac, lol, whatever. They let go. When a celebrity fucking steals shit from a store, they let go of that, uh, of that yeah. person because that person is not stealing out I of know, need, that's, out that's of necessity. Easy. That's easy. But Haas, you think that it's just because people need it? Yeah, I get it. Rich people steal less because they don't need to. No, they're, they're, they're not stealing. But, they're not but, stealing Gucci handbags because they need the handbag. They're stealing Gucci handbags because it's the easiest to fucking sell to a fence because a Gucci yeah, handbag gives but you those money. Guys are are they're not like, oh my God, 
my baby's at home and I have to steal the Scoochie handbag. Otherwise, he won't eat. This isn't Jean Valjean. It's guys no, in the broke. neighborhood who are going, hey, guys, it turns out we can steal things. Let's just go grab it. Yeah, right? because they're fucking broke and they have no yeah, prospects but at the same for the time, future. They're making a decision to steal yeah, from other people. Because they're fucking broke and have no prospects for the future. And so, what you need to do with those people create is opportunities for them and the also term, ensure that they have prospects uh, for the of future. Of course. Look, in the long term, Create affordable housing for homeless people, create opportunities, uh, lift up wages, et cetera. All of that we agree on, right? Okay. But in the, in the sh- and in the short term, I'm not saying take that guy and put him in prison for 28 years because he got took, took toothpaste from fucking CVS, right? Uh-huh. But what I am saying is, let's get back to sanity where there were some consequences. So why okay? do you... So, so like, but, but you're still not ago, answering. There were consequences. But you're still that not... That guy would go to prison and he would have trouble uh, getting to a position where he could get out uh, one minute later, here's what's happening. Huss. You are still not fact. answering. You are still not answering one main question that I have, which is if these, if this is the case, if if we are just like letting people go, okay, why the fuck do we have such a massive prison system, such a massive carceral state that is like insane? By the way, in California, I have friends. I have a friend who uh, went to prison in California, was in Los Angeles County Jail. It is a, it's basically once you're in that machine, it is virtually impossible for you to come out of that not being a, a, a bigger criminal than you enter. Yeah, we have to fix the prisons. There's no question okay. about that. And I don't say that blithely. I say it like, no, we actually have to fix the fucking prisons and no one ever okay. does it, right? And we have to actually have mental health treatment. I, I 100% agree with that. The problem is that you, you, our politicians are so bad. You fund it and they just don't do it. Oh okay. shit, we gotta go. Okay. All right, All right look, we're gonna we're gonna end this. Last thing. Okay, say, say one the one last thing. thing. We're gonna okay. end it right here, though. So we have to go. The food is cold. That everybody, the word is out in the street that you can go steal anything you want, is because we got rid of uh, cash bail and we lowered things to misdemeanors. <laughs> so when they go to when the cops take them to prison, bro, you don't even understand on, how cash on, bail hold works. Hold on. Of course, I know how cash bail works. So we we bring the guy in, and then the prosecutors say, "Yeah, I'm gonna plead it down, right?" And the guy's probably gonna walk, but for now, there's no cash bail anyway. So he's free to go, right? So the cops walked him in and they walked him out. They walked him in and they walked him out. Eventually the cops go, what am I walking them in and out for, right? And so they're not responding. That is definitely happening, okay? And then everybody goes out and tells their friends, oh, it turns out they can't even put you in prison anymore. Now, by the way, sometimes people do, if they've committed a serious enough offense Bro, when and the cash, prosecutor when, actually cares yeah. and it's, not, it's in the right bracket, they yeah. actually do prosecute Three months later, six months later. No, but no, ca- no cash don't. bail. No cash bail just puts it puts the leniency in the hands of the fucking judge that decides whether someone is a flight risk or not. That's it. What you're frustrated by is like judges, I guess, not a, not uh, assessing adequately when someone is a flight risk or uh, a, a risk to public. That's what you're saying because no cash bail and your framing on this is super right wing. No cash bail does not fucking mean if you're a rapist you get let out immediately. No, no, I didn't say rapist. Or okay, if you're rapist. if you're if you've stolen shit you get out, let you out do. immediately. You know you do. No, dog. It just depends on if you're if you've stolen multiple cars and then you still are able to uh, be no, on no, release car- because there's no fucking cash bail. That simply states under a thousand bucks you're not going to jail and you yeah, know. Yeah. Okay. It. Well, well, I that don't means have- when Haas, last super last thing when you pass a law saying basically in essence because of pleading down and all the things we've talked about that if you steal under a thousand dollars you're not going to jail do you agree that people will steal under a thousand dollars infinitely like that they will definitely people will go and steal shit that under a thousand dollars maybe but I think, but no one is stealing under a thousand dollars unless they fucking need to steal under a thousand dollars. No, you're making it seem like oh, that's crazy. Jean Valjean. No, no, I, don't, I know they're in tough no, situation. I don't think but they're... a lot of people are like, let's just go get shit. You don't. That's real world. That is that is that is insane. I we do not you live what? on the same you planet. Think they're not thinking, let's we, just go grab we, stuff. You and I do not live on the same planet. If you think that there is like massive amounts of people who are like, let's get together. We already. I'm a CPA. I have Not a job. A CPA, dude. I know that a lot of people are in tough times, but it's like you're making it sound like, like you, you they think, have no other choice and no, they had to do it. Meanwhile, the guys what is the other choice? are laughing what, what, their ass off going, it turns out shit is free now. Okay, like that's okay. because okay. you're being that, patronizing. That is, that is, no. You're being patronizing. Like they're saintly and they would never do I anything never said immoral. That, no, I never said and they, they were just, saintly. just downtrodden. I did not so say that I'm they were saintly. saintly. Yeah, of course a lot of people are downtrodden. No, I don't think that they're but saintly. But the immoral ones are going, it turns out I could just steal shit now and I'm going to. You don't think Bro, that's immoral? I never said that they're saintly. 
Okay, I did not say that they're saintly, but I also, and I don't think that they're Jean Valjean stealing bread for their family, but all I'm simply stating is that no one is, no one with future prospects, no one with adequate living conditions, no one who's making ends meet is going to be like, let me go steal a thousand dollars worth of shit, dog. I'll be out on bail anyway, without bail anyway, tomorrow. The only reason why there's more people that are doing that now than before is not necessarily because of the enforcement mechanism in the state of freaking California, where we have a massively inflated carceral system anyway, so much so that you you have these reactionary people literally saying, I guess we can't lock more people up right now because we just literally do not have the space. They're sl sleeping on top of one another. It's because there's more poor people. That's it. There's, yeah. And if you no, don't solve poverty, so that's, if that's you don't solve, if yeah, you don't solve poverty, you will never solve this problem. But you're not going to solve poverty overnight, Haas. Okay, but well, we got to go. But we have to go. We have to go. Unfortunately, okay. we have to go. We're being super rude to the family. They're literally, they said the food is cold. I love you guys. I will see you tomorrow. Last three minute ad break here. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, you know, we'll, we'll maybe have this conversation one more time. Okay. Bye, everybody. <coughs> Have a good Thanksgiving. <coughs> Happy Thanksgiving. <coughs> Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Jank Uger with the Young Turks. All right.